so I mean, we've seen alongside Grace, like a lot of companies starting to unveil similar product lines. I think customers are becoming more accepting of it. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'd say the one of the biggest things that's enabled that explosion is in the industrial market, we've started to see some of the, the firewall restrictions come down. So, um, you know, that, that has allowed for the adoption of these connected technologies that are, are leveraging either Wi-Fi back, backbones inside industrial facilities or, you know, circumventing that entirely via some sort of cellular connection to get out to the cloud. Um, you know, these, these have certainly streamlined the ability to put these sort of technologies in, in front of customers. I mean, I think also the, the general maintenance worker, uh, we're starting to see a younger group pop up, which, you know, that, that allows for kind of more, um, uh, uh, I guess, entry level or, or a younger a younger approach to, to ingesting data, right? So whereas a lot of industrial systems are, are, are set up for um, uh, the way they were largely 20, 30 years ago, um, we're starting to see a, a movement towards dif different types of technologies in that industrial space. Um, you know, I think, you know, one of the things that we learned early on, though, is that in order to successfully sell anything to the industrial environment, that, that's a predictive maintenance technology, we really needed to focus on, on the, the application or the solution, right? Yeah. As opposed to trying to sell a widget that's just a one-off device that's going to provide some sort of value, we needed to provide, you know, a comprehensive solution that took into account some of these, these unique things that pop up in the, in the, in the industrial world. Right. So, um, you know, we 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 took some time those first couple of years to set up an, an internal capability to, to talk with customers about about those applications and be able to really not just technologically, but as a business support those those uh, those installations, both, you know, going out into the facility before anything had been sold to talk about wireless deployments to make sure that the IT departments were set up correctly, um, you know, walking through installations with them, dealing with system integration. We'll get into some of that a little bit later um, here, um, you know, and then just really sitting with that, the data that we're collecting over time and making sure that that kind of it, it provided a successful path for customers to get the value uh, over the lifetime of the, the sensors that were being deployed. Yeah, so we, we talk a lot. We, we talk a lot internally about control versus monitoring, yep. um, and there really is different. There really is different uh, rule sets, I would say, for control versus monitoring, um, and uh, this makes monitoring actually very difficult <laughs> to to kind of implement in an industrial facility because the industrial facility doesn't necessarily need the monitoring for the machine to function at every minute of every day, right? And so what it what it becomes is it becomes kind of like, oh, I forgot to have uh, my windshield washer fluid in my car. Well, now I go through a thing of bugs and I can't, you know, I can't get uh, the bugs off uh, my windshield washer. Um, you know, whereas, you know, I might have kind of ignored that, that alarm, um, you know, and, and so getting to that, getting to kind of installing a monitoring system is a different type of approach. Um, also, a wireless system in an industrial facility is just inherently tricky. Um, and we definitely learned some, you know, we definitely learned um, from some, some failures in that wireless system deployment. And, you know, really, from our perspective, there is no way around doing an on-site kind of wireless survey in order to really understand that, hey, the offering I'm trying to put in has line of sight, you know, there's not all sorts of, you know, weird um, electromagnetic, you know, interference. I mean, in industrial equipment, especially in the U.S., you got you got electrical signals going everywhere all the time and drives putting off all sorts of noise. Um, and, you know, we just don't, you know, we don't know what we're going to get into. And, you know, we're trying to make sure our, our deployments are as rock solid as possible. Um, but definitely doing those, um, you know, doing a, a full kind of, uh, uh review of what needs to get installed, what the machinery is like, a review of kind of the physics of those machinery, what are the failure modes, doing a wireless um, audit. Uh, what are some other things that you found kind of to be important in, uh, you know, in, in setting up a IIoT project for success? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it, that customer engagement, I think, is the most important piece, right? So, so, uh, and we learned that early on that if we don't have an engaged kind of maintenance workforce mm -hmm. that that's, that's working with our application support team, 
a lot of times like the solution just doesn't take hold the way it could, right? And and a lot of times it's an individual that that steps up inside that that kind of customer account and is really taking ownership for the maintenance of you know some critical asset inside an industrial facility and and they see the value that the data that we're providing um, can can give so so that that like, kind of we're talking about not really replacing but augmenting humans with sensors here but ultimately like the important thing that we've kind of drawn out of that is man that human component of being able to uh, to ingest and take action on data in a way that's meaningful to uh, an industrial entity like that that's a super important part. Um, you know, I, I, I think that's that's uh, it's an augmentation technology. It's not a not a replacement of, of a maintenance team. Um, and that's that's, you know, kind of one of the interesting uh, dichotomies of, of the, the work that we've we've done. Um, yeah, there's it, it definitely if 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 not just kind of not having a champion, but also if you have a maintenance team that just maybe isn't as disciplined as you as you need them to be and they just start ignoring alarms. Mm -hmm. Well, all of a sudden, then you know our system's getting blamed for not, you know, for for a, p a failure that's occurring. But really, no, the alarms were sent out. You guys just didn't follow up on and right. go through and perform the maintenance procedures. Um, you know, and and that's one of the reasons I really love our approach in the control space is is that, you know, we we can go ahead and provide those cloud based alarms and alerts, but we can also go ahead and do it through the control system local to the HMI. Yep. Um, to the operator who's on the machinery. Um, and so, you know, just where they're already kind of working instead of having to get into an email or something. There, it, it, I, I, I always believe in the power of the and, you know, it's never an a, or approach, but uh, definitely we've found some success in, in getting that information to control offering. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think that was one of the, the impactful early lessons learned, honestly, was the industrial space you know, some, some folks want all that data in the cloud, just like your standard Internet of Things uh, technologies provide, right? But we did find a lot of feedback that, man, it'd be great if we could get this information in the PLC or, or the PLC and the cloud, or I want it in my SCADA, or, you know, I want it into my existing CMMS system. Like all of these were pieces of feedback that came back that really led us down uh, the path of developing out seamless, easy to use technologies for taking the data that we were capturing and making it available in the right place at, at the right time, right? So, um, you know, we, we, we sell a lot through the Rockwell Automation Distribution Channel, um, you know, and, and a lot of our folks here in North America are using Rockwell systems, uh, you know, from a PLC perspective. So, you know, we, we went through the process of developing out the add-on profile, which I think has, has played dividends in the Rockwell ecosystem. We've got similar easy tools to use kind of for integrating our devices with other types of technologies. And that's that's been a big, um, I think, value add to, to customers and to integrators, whoever's touching the, the interface between the sensor data and the the person who's receiving that information. You know, we try to make that that pathway as, as seamless, as easy, as uh, uh, um, diverse as we can make it. Um, yep. so, so that's been an important thing. Um, Anything else we want to pull on on that topic, Drew? Uh, I, I just, I, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, r really thinking it, you know, having a culture of reliability um, in that facility, you know, so understanding and, and understanding where your downtime is coming from, mm -hmm. understanding your cost of downtime really allows, you know, when, when you're selecting kind of an IIoT vendor, really allows you then to understand where you want to put your resources first and what you need to pay attention to. Look, I, you know, I think it's most easy to typically go ahead and roll out a LTE based offering first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so get a trial, you know, trying to get we, we, we sell our, uh, our uh, kind of startup kit, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is typically like one gateway and five sensors and and they're able to kind of go ahead and try this on different machinery, move things around, understand it. You know, the gateway just plugs into the you know yep. into a typical outlet, and you can go ahead and collect data for a while, see if what see if it's collecting data the way that you want. Um, you know, get get your feet wet with the technology in the easiest, quickest way to to, to deploy, but then being able to roll out an entire solution, I think, takes a lot more architecture. Yeah. And really understanding that, uh, how, you know, I, for instance, one of the integrations that we have is with Fix. 
uh, on a CMMS system. So if you're using a CMMS system, having that IIoT data in a centralized system that doesn't need to be referenced somewhere else mm -hmm. is, is, is really critical. Um, understanding the applications for control and I.O., um, you know, saying, okay, hey, I want to have a beacon on my machinery so that when the vibration is over X, Y, Z, uh, I'm, sh I'm starting to flash a red strobe light. I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of discussions here. Uh, and by the way, we're talking about vibration, but it also could be current monitoring. We have a hotspot monitor um, in our offering as well, so for switch gear which you want to talk about a criticality assessment, almost everyone gets this one wrong, right? And so they, they, they can, they're super concerned about all the motors down at the facility level. They just forget that like, it's also super important to monitor like the big switch gear that's feeding yeah, all, you, of the, <laughs> all of the, the motors. If you, don't have, if you don't have electricity, your motors aren't doing much. <laughs> right, so, yeah. You're, yeah, you don't, you're not so concerned about your bearings if you don't have any, uh, if you don't have any power uh, to those. Uh, and so I, I do think that that's a really, uh, a really super important uh, thing is to understand those criticality assessments. Try to get your feet wet, do some startups, do some data collection, um, and get your team engaged in working as part of that problem.